Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on circles which is basically a revision for your ICAC boards exams which is upcoming. So basically what we're going to do is go through the theory in a brief manner and then focus on solving problems which are basically the backbone of the exam. So without further ado, let's get started and we're going to start with the properties of chords. So one very important uh, theorem that comes into mind is let's say we have a circle and we have the center of the circle and uh, we have a chord AB, right? So we have the circle, the center let's say is O. So the theorem says if a straight line is drawn from the center of a circle and it bisects the chord, it is perpendicular to the chord. So basically, if I'm drawing a straight line, which is bisecting the chord, then this straight line is perpendicular to the chord. So this is our theorem number one. So basically, we'll not do the proofs. We'll basically use the applications of the theorem. Proof you can always find in a book and uh, try to take a look at how the proof is done but basically for this revision we are not going to go into the proofs okay so basically we'll understand what the theorem is and the applications of the theorem that's what we are going to focus on in this session so basically a straight line drawn to a chord and bisecting the chord will basically be perpendicular to the chord so that is our theorem one okay so if that's true then the converse of the theorem is also going to be true. So let me just write it down. So theorem one is the straight line. So is basically the straight line drawn from the center of the circle. and bisects the chord basically and bisects the chord will be perpendicular to the chord right so a straight line which is basically this one let's call it ox the straight line drawn from the center of the circle and which bisects a chord will be perpendicular to the chord okay you can write and which bisects the chord will be perpendicular to the chord okay and basically which bisects a chord not the chord because it can bisect any chord right so let me just change that so it bisects a chord will be perpendicular to that chord okay so basically if i draw a chord here and we draw a straight line from the center such that it bisects the chord then this will make 90 degree with the chord okay so that is theorem one so if that's theorem one then the reverse of that will also be true so what is the reverse of the of that so basically if we have a perpendicular to the chord from the center of the circle then that will bisect the chord so let's say we have a circle here and we have the center and we have a chord right so what theorem 2 says is the perpendicular to a chord from the center so the perpendicular to a chord from the center bisects the chord so basically if we draw a perpendicular from the center to the chord then it will bisect the chord so let's say this is a b and this is the center of so this is basically the reverse of the theorem or converse of the theorem right so basically i'm going to write it down so the the perpendicular so the perpendicular to a chord from the center of the circle right so from the center of the circle 
so perpendicular to the chord from the center of the circle bisects the chord right so bisects the chord so theorem one is basically the reverse of this right so if you look at theorem one so let's call it this as theorem two so let me call it as theorem two so theorem one is straight line drawn from the center of the circle and bisects a chord will be perpendicular to the chord so a straight line which is drawn from the center and which bisects the chord will be perpendicular to the chord so basically the converse of that will also be true which says that the perpendicular to a chord from the center of the circle bisects the chord so if you are drawing a perpendicular to the chord from the center of the circle it will also bisect the chord right so that is our theorem number two and there are some corollaries to those theorem right which is basically would also be true if the theorem is true okay so let us look at those corollary okay so let's look at the corollary for uh, these theorems so what is the so what can we basically derive from these theorems right so it is in a plane of a circle the perpendicular bisector of a chord of a circle passes through its center so, so basically again the same thing um let's draw the circle and it is said that the perpendicular bisector of a chord so if we have chords here and here and all of that the perpendicular bisector of the chords passes through its center so if we do the perpendicular bisector which is bisector and also 90 degree right so that's why it's perpendicular bisector so the perpendicular bisectors basically will pass through the center right so that is the corollary so let me write it down so the corollary to this theorem is in the plane of a circle what will happen the perpendicular bisector of a chord so the perpendicular bisector of a chord so the perpendicular bisectors of the chord will pass through the center right so passes through the center so in the plane of a circle the perpendicular bisector of the chord passes through the center so again very important corollary so basically coming from the same thing and what is the basic main theorem the theorem is straight line drawn from the center of the circle and which bisects the chord will be perpendicular to the chord so from that we derive that or from that we came to the second theorem which is the converse of it which is that the perpendicular to a chord from the center of the circle so perpendicular from the center of the circle bisects the chord and then this corollary that the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center and from this corollary we can also derive that only one circle can pass through three non-collinear points right so this is only one circle can pass through three non collinear points so again i'm not going into the derivations i'm just going in just giving a kind of a brief summary of what are the theorems and the corollaries that we have before we move on to the problems but for uh, the derivation for the proofs you can always go to your textbook and take a look at those uh, we'll focus on problem solving in this session so uh, that's the uh, another uh, basically another theorem that we can derive from these same corollary uh, so let me just write it down theorem so this is let's call it theorem number three so only one circle can pass through three non-collinear points so if we have three points which are non-collinear 
which means that they will not have so collinear points means that a straight line can pass through all three points right so if these three points are non collinear means straight line will not pass through these three points so only one circle can pass through such a such three non collinear points right so that is the theorem and like i'm just going to grow briefly on the proof so basically if we have two points then that would be a chord to the circle another two points that will be a chord to the circle right the perpendicular bisector of the chords will meet at the center right and this is basically uh, so the perpendicular bisector will meet at the center so these are the radiuses and then we can see that just one circle can pass through these three points because the radius of the circle has to be the same right so that's how basically the proof comes but we're not going into the details i'm just going to take this off for now and go into the next theorem right so what is the next theorem the next theorem says that the perpendicular bisectors of two non-parallel chords of the circle will meet at the center so again basically derived from the same exact uh, theorem and same properties right but this is the corollary to this theorem. So what we can derive from just one property of the circle, right? So perpendicular bisector, let me draw a circle and explain this to you. Uh, let me move it a little bit up and okay, okay. So let's draw a circle up here. And so the perpendicular bisector of two non, so let's draw two non-parallel chords. So let's say these are the two non-parallel chords and the perpendicular bisector so perpendicular bisector perpendicular bisector so these will intersect at the center of the circle so this is the theorem or this is the corollary to the previous theorem so the corollary to the theorem is perpendicular bisectors of two non-parallel chords will pass through or will intersect at the center will intersect at the center what will happen if we have two parallel chords so basically there's going just going to be one perpendicular bisector right that's why we have two non-parallel chords so it will intersect at the center okay so this is the corollary to this theorem and we'll just move on to the problems just have a couple more so the next corollary is if there's one and only one circle that passes through three non-collinear points then two different circle can meet at at most two points right and let me just uh, you know visually show you that so two circles can meet at at most two points what are these two points these are these two points right so they can meet maximum at two points so they can meet at one point which is this or they cannot or they don't meet right which is two separate circles but they cannot meet at more than two points okay so that is our third corollary which is again coming from the previous theorem. So it is um, two different circles. So two different circles can meet at at most two different point at most two different point okay so that is another corollary on this and we come into our next theorem and just two like this one and the next one and then we'll move on to problems okay so what is our next theorem so our next theorem says that uh, which is again basically coming from exactly the same uh, principles so 
equal chords of a circle are equidistant from the center. So if we have a circle and we have chords, right? And if two chords are of equal length, so if these chords are of equal length, then it is said that they are equidistant from the center. So let me just uh, draw it a little bit better. So the center of this chord is here. And let me just draw it up here. We'll meet somewhere at the center. So if the chord lengths, let's say AB and CD. So basically, if AB is equals to CD, then let's say this is OX and this is OY. So then OX is equals to OY, okay? So this is basically this theorem, okay? So let me just write it down in words. So equal chords, so it's going to be equal chords of a circle are equidistant to each other right are equidistant from the center sorry are equidistant from the center so are equidistant from the center so this is also another theorem so basically we already explained this right equal chords of a circle are equidistant from the center and then let's move on to our last theorem before we move on to a set of questions okay so what is the next theorem and the last one here is chords of a circle so basically the the converse of it right the chords of a circle that are equidistant from the center are equal so if we have chords and these chords are equidistant so basically this is equal to this so let's this is ox and oy so basically we'll write the same thing if ox is equals to oy then let's call it ab and cd so then ab is equals to cd basically the converse of this theorem right so let me write it down again so this is theorem and that is chords of a circle that are equidistant from the center. So equidistant from the center of the circle are equal. So chords that are equidistant from the center so chords which is a b and c d which are equidistant from the center are equal right so this is all about the theorems so now let's look at a few questions okay so let's say we have this question so the question is the center of a circle of radius 13 so let me quickly draw the circle so we have this circle and the radius of the circle is 13 and the center of the circle, let's mark it as point O, is 3,6, right? And P is any point inside the circle. So let's say P is here. <coughs> and APB is a chord. So let's draw APB. So let's draw the chord. So this is A, this is B, and this is P, such that ap equals pb so if i draw p here then ap and pb are equal that is given so we have to calculate ab so what is given we are given the point p which is basically 7 comma 9 okay so if you're doing so let's not do it in the coordinate system we're just going to write it 7 comma 9 we're not putting it on a coordinate system so just ignore the axis for now so we have these points so how do we calculate AB? So from, uh, we know that 
AP is equal to PB. So an O is the center. So if we draw a straight line from the center and if it bisects the chord, then from the first theorem, we know that it is perpendicular to the chord, right? So a straight line drawn from the center, which bisects the chord is going to be perpendicular to the chord. So we're going to use that. So we know this is perpendicular, right? And we are given the value of O, P and if I draw OA, which is the radius. So this is 13. So can we calculate OP? Of course, we can calculate OP, right? So OP is equal to, we'll use the distance formula. So under root of 7 minus 3 whole square plus under root of 9 minus 6 whole square, right? So under root of 7 minus 3 whole square plus 9 minus 6 whole square, which is equal to 7 minus 3 is 4. So 4 square plus 9 minus 6 is 3. So 3 square plus 4 square is 5 square, right? So OP is basically 5. So this is 5. So how much is AP? So AP is, if we use the Pythagoras theorem, that's going to be under root of 13 square minus 5 square, right? So basically 5 square plus AP square is equals to 13 square, right? So AP square is 13 square minus 5 square. So 13 square is 169. So 169 minus 5 square is 25. So let's give you 144. And square root of that is 12, right? So this is 12. And we know AP equals PB. So we know that AP is equals PB, right? So if AP equals PB, then how much is AB? So AB is equals to AP plus PB which is equals to 12 plus 12, which is equal to 24, right? So the answer for this question is 24, clear? If you have any questions, please put it up on the comment section and we'll be answering the uh, comments soon, okay? So that's question one. So I hope you guys uh, have uh, a clear understanding of how we are using the theorems. We'll go uh, and explain it a bit more in our next question, okay? Okay, so let's move on to our next question and give it a minute try and uh, then we'll come to the solution. Just try to use the theorems and uh, everything that we have discussed so far and uh, we'll come to the solution. Okay, so I guess you guys have given it a try. So this one, uh, let's discuss first of all. So it says that if a circle of radius 5 centimeter and... A, B and A, C. So in a circle of radius 5 centimeter, A, B and A, C are two chords such that A, B equals to A, C equals to 6 centimeters. So let's draw a big circle up here and here it should be in a circle, not if a circle, my bad. Okay. So in a circle of radius 5 centimeter, uh, AB and AC are two chords such that AB equals AC. So we are having basically two chords. So let us draw the chords. So we have AB and we have AC, right? Uh, it's looking a little bit ugly. Let me just fix it a little bit. So let's say we draw it like this. So it's A. And here it's B. Okay. So A, B and A, C. So this is A, B and C. And these are equal. This is equal to 6, right? Find the length of the chord B, C. So if you connect B, C, you have to basically find the length of this chord B, C. So that is the question. So how will we approach this question? So this is the radius, right? Sorry, this is the center. So if I draw OB, that would be the radius, right? So we are given that the radius is 5. So we are given that the radius of the circle is 5. And let us draw OA, which is also the radius, right? So let us put this as X. So how much will this be? So the total is 5. 
So this is going to be 5 minus x, right? And let us put this as y. So basically, we have to find the value of 2y, which is bc, right? Just, just uh, put it in terms of some variables, right? So first of all, let us consider these two triangles. So let us mark this as x. So let us consider triangle B, X, A, and triangle A, X, C. So why are we considering these two triangles? Because we have to find some relationship between this 6, X, and Y, right? So using those relationships, uh, we'll try to find the value of X and Y. So to get the value of X and Y, we have two variables, right? We need two equations. So basically, we're trying to form these two equations. Now, in these two triangles, we know that AB is equals to AC, which is given. And this AX is common. So X is equal to AX, which is common. And AB equals to AC is given. And in this triangle, basically, it's an isosceles triangle, right? So since it's an isosceles triangle, the opposite angles are equal. So angle A b x is equals to angle a c x right a c x so this should equal so side angle side so we can call it a similar triangle sorry so it's a congruent triangle so all the sides and angles are equal so if we consider this angle so angle b x a is equal to angle a y c and that would be equal to the sum of that is 180 if they're equal they must be equal to 90 so this is a perpendicular so if this is 90 this is also 90 so now we can use the pythagoras theorem right now we have a relationship between the angles so we can use the pythagoras theorem so so if we use it for triangle o b x so for that triangle, we can write as x square plus y square is equal to 5 square. So that is equation 1. So for the smaller triangle, sorry, for the bigger triangle, so triangle B, X, A, what we can write? So we can write 5 minus x whole square, right? 5 minus x whole square plus y square plus y square equals 6 square. So, if we subtract these two, we can get rid of y square. So, so let's do the subtraction. 6 square is 36 minus 5 square is 25. So, 25, this is 36. So, if we subtract it, we get negative 11. So, negative 11 equals to 5 minus x whole square is, if we expand it, it's going to be, 5 square which is 25 minus 10x and plus x square right and then we have minus of x square right so basically sorry we have negative of this right so this will be negative 25 plus 10x minus x square and plus x square so this x square x square gets cancelled and we have 25 so this 10x is equals to 25 minus 11 so that is equal to 14 right so 10x is equal to 14 so x is equals to 14 over 10 which is 7 over 5 so that is the value of x so how much is the value of y so we are asked to find y so y is equals to 25 minus x square so y is equals to 25 minus 49 over 25, right? So 49, so 25, 25 is 625. So 625 minus 49 over 25. That is y square. So, so 625 minus 49 so 625 minus 50 is 575 
plus 1, it's basically 49. So, so 575 plus 1 is 576. So 576 over 25 is y square. So how much is y? So y is going to be under root of this. So 576 is uh, the square root of 576 is uh, 24. So that would be 24 over 5. And how much is basically how much is uh, the value of BC? The value of BC is 2 times of y. So that is going to be 2 times of 24 over 5, right? So 2 times of 24 over 5, which is basically 48 over 5. So 48 over 5 is the answer to this question. Okay. So this, so this is all uh, for this session. So in the next session, we'll do a few additional questions on this topic and we'll cover a few additional topics on circles. So for now, that's all for this session. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and we'll see you guys in our next session. Thank you so much.